Uh, all right. <coughs> Sorry for being a little bit late. Um, I hear that uh, people are really into punctuality in Switzerland. Um, it's a resident here in Zug. I can verify that is indeed the case, that and speed limits. Um, OK, so uh, I'm going to assume that most people here have probably heard about Solana. Uh, how many folks here have used Solana before? Yes, yes. Uh, last year it was a little bit less, uh, but we've had a pretty good year in the Solana ecosystem. Uh, there's been a lot going on in Solana, um, too much to mention all in one talk, so I just wanted to focus today on one thing uh, that we're pretty excited about. Um, uh, we call it PayFi, and want to talk through that. So, all right. So uh, if you've been on uh, crypto Twitter, uh, you might have seen over the last number of months a uh, uh, campaign we've been running only possible on Solana. Uh, and there's been you know, really quite a number of things uh, that we feel like in the, sort of, in the ecosystem of decentralized applications really can only here in 2024 be built using Solana infrastructure. Uh, and it's not just about the hardware network itself, as I'll get to. Uh, it's really sort of about the, the, the strength and the depth of the ecosystem as a whole. So what are some examples of that? Um, these are uh, deep in projects, centralized physical infrastructure networks. You might have used uh, HiveMapper before, Render, which is a decentralized GPU resource. And then there's also Helium Mobile, which is really kind of like the, the tent pole uh, deep in project within the Solana ecosystem, um, decentralized mobile network. <clears throat> Uh, they really kicked off deep in starting around probably last year, uh, and, uh, and we've really seen a flourishing of the ecosystem in deep in, right? So this to me is an example of a vertical that really can only exist in Web3 and can really only exist in a high performance network. Uh, so we're really thrilled that you know, something like Deepin has been written about in blog posts for a really long time. Uh, and like many use cases in blockchain, actually, I feel like everything's kind of been dreamed about, written about, because we've had 15 years to think about it all. Uh, and many of these applications are now really only coming to life on Solana. So that's Deepin. Uh, meme coins, right? If you're from uh, the APAC region, you might call them meme coins. There are 20,000 that are minted every day on Solana. Um, I will say when WIF first came to market, I rolled my eyes a little bit. I was clearly wrong on that one. Um, and now WIF seems to be here to stay. Uh, and, uh, and so we've got 20,000 meme coins a day being minted. Um, you know, obviously there's a, a, a variety in, uh, in the quality of meme coins, I would say. Uh, but, you know, it is really something where people can directly interact with the chain and can directly have a little bit of fun. Okay, um, another uh, project <clears throat> that uh, can only exist in blockchain and can really only exist on Solana is something called Drip. Uh, because we rolled out state compression last year, with Drip, what you can do now um, is you can essentially, uh, initially what they started off doing was dropping NFTs to all of their subscribers whether it's 10,000, 100,000, and now many more than that, right? And that's the type of thing where you can't do that if it's unaffordable, uh, but you can do that if it is a fraction of a cent to mint a single NFT. Uh, so to me, you know, high performance is not just about TPS and numbers. What it is, it's always about enabling new application spaces. Uh, and that is something that, um, that I think we even started to see during the Web2 era, to, to, uh, to use a simple analogy, um, Netflix, when we, have 50, when we had 56K modems, was mailing DVDs to your doorstep. Same company today, with advent of bandwidth, streaming into every home, uh, content creation uh, at a massive scale, and streaming video into your home. Is it the same company? In a way, yes, but absolutely not in terms of product, right? Uh, and another, uh, another um, capability we've been investing in quite a bit is Solana Pay. Um, and Solana Pay we rolled out a number of years ago uh, to allow you to basically pay merchant checkout with really any SPL token. And what we've been thinking about is something called PayFi, which really extends the concept of payments. Uh, and to me, this actually goes back to really the original vision of blockchain. So the Bitcoin white paper 15 years ago uh, what is the title? A Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System. So what the original vision, in my mind, of blockchain and of Bitcoin was really originally around, first you start with self-custody. This is the original Bitcoin Genesis wallet. And with self-custody, what you have is you have algorithmically, mathematically guaranteed digital property rights. 
Why is that important? Well, we live in an increasingly digital world where the vast majority of the things that are valuable in your life actually are digitally represented and ultimately hosted on a server, likely hosted by probably a big tech company, uh, way down the value chain. Okay. Uh, and the further, kind of the further vision that was articulated really in the early days of Bitcoin, uh, and Ethereum really grasped with uh, Uniswap and with Compound, is this idea of programmable money, right? If, uh, if money is now basically code, uh, then uh, you can program it, smart contracts, and with that, you can eventually build an open financial system. So, you know, if you think that MetaMask is uh, maybe not up to today's UI standards, I will remind you back in 2017, it was considered a huge upgrade over the Bitcoin Genesis wallet. And we've all probably used Etherscan and MetaMask at some point, probably done a Uniswap swap at some point. So these are uh, pretty uh, cool initial efforts to build programmable money in an open financial system with, you know, an economy of billions and billions, right? Uh, so not to take anything away from what we have today, uh, but the accessibility of this is inherently hampered by just the cost of doing so, right? On those days when you really need to make a swap, it can cost you 800 bucks, and the number of people who can afford that uh, shrinks dramatically at $800. Uh, and furthermore, uh, once you continue to pull on the thread, why is this important? Because digital property rights are the beginning of having economic sovereignty, and econ economic sovereignty is one crucial component of having self-sovereignty. Um, who here has read this book, The Sovereign Individual? Great. I consider this required reading in blockchain. It was written in the 90s when I'm not even sure how many people were on AOL. And somewhere in the middle of the book, he basically has this 25-page treatise on essentially the blueprint for Bitcoin. So a little bit small text, but let me read uh, some of this out for you. Um, <clears throat> Uh, new technologies will allow the holders of wealth to bypass the national monopolies that have issued and regulated money in the modern period. Uh, world's wealth will be transcended by mathematical algorithms that have no physical existence. Cyber money controlled by private markets will supersede fiat money issued by governments. So this is, to me, the original vision of blockchain. Uh, of course, we can also build all sorts of different decentralized applications, but to me, uh, what the core, the part of the core value proposition of blockchain and decentralized applications is the potential to create new markets, new financial markets, and to financialize existing markets. Um, okay, so, uh, so with regards to PayFi, um, what are three conditions for this to even exist, right? Uh, to me, there's the first one is performance. Right? People talk about this a lot, scaling, uh, TPS, uh, and two simple ways of expressing TPS. One is uh, finality block time, 400 milliseconds. Another one would be, speaking of NFTs again, uh, with state compression, it costs about $100 to mint 1 million NFTs. Comparatively, if you take a look at uh, some of our other uh, networks out there, uh, it is more than, uh, it has many, many orders of magnitude. And what that means is that at a certain cost profile, you can take something uh, which is infrastructure that, at a high cost, infrastructure has to be the application, right? When it costs dollars to mint a, mint a PFP or mint an NFT, it has to be art. It has to be intrinsically valuable itself. When you bring the cost of something like an NFT, as an example, down, what you do is you take infrastructure uh, and you allow it to just be infrastructure to support other applications rather than having to be an application itself. Okay, so second condition, capital liquidity. As much as we all love Bitcoin, trillion dollar market, uh, we denominate our lives every day in a medium of exchange, which is fiat money. No one thinks about coffee in terms of quantity of Satoshis, right? Uh, so where Solana is today, transaction volume is number one. Last week we announced that uh, PayPal USD, so PYUSD is being issued on Solana is the second chain. And as of the beginning of this year, uh, the transaction volume is about 2x what you see in other ecosystems. Um, so there's actual capital liquidity in Solana. The third is talent liquidity. In terms of developer ecosystems and having an independent developer ecosystem, uh, there's really two uh, that, uh, that are at scale today. One is clearly EVM. Uh, and the second that has scale and organic interest in it 
um, at the scale of thousands is Solana. And that's important because if you're building decentralized open source networks, uh, it, it's about having community of folks who are coming to build a business on it and you know, independent developers. Okay, so three conditions, performance, capital liquidity, talent liquidity. Said more simply, uh, fast and cheap, money people use, and developers. Now today, in my opinion, if you look at various options in the ecosystem, uh, there is no other ecosystem that can bring you all three. Uh, there certainly are ecos ecosystems that can give you two out of the three, but without the combination of all three, it's very difficult to be building, uh, to be building uh, in this case, real sort of new financial primitives based on a payments layer. Okay, so what is PayFi? Isn't this just DeFi? Well, no, it's not, because DeFi, if you think about it, is all around a buy-sell transaction. Right? It's all around a trade, and uh, ultimately all around uh, some form of you know, anywhere between speculative activity and creating price stability in the overall ecosystem. But the vast majority of economic activity is really built around uh, the transaction for goods and services, right? Not around buy-sell, but around send-receive. And we don't really have any uh, new financial primitives being built around that, I would argue, because you can't yet. So to me, what PayFi, PayFi is, it's about new financial primitives that are built around the time value of money. Okay, so let's go through three examples. We're all familiar with buy now, pay later, right? Klarna, Affirm, very large markets. In crypto, you could do, theoretically, do something new, which is called buy now, pay never. So uh, we always love to talk about buying crypto, uh, buying coffee with crypto. So let's go back to the perennial example. Uh, you're paying $5 for a cup of coffee. Typically, the credit card company uh, may pay for that on your behalf, and you pay back the credit card company and get some you know, points and mileage. OK, great. What if instead you could take some amount, put it into a lend borrow, let's say Camino, uh, one of our Swiss hometown projects here, and if you put in 50 bucks or 500 bucks, you'll pay off that $5 a little bit faster or a little bit slower. And so based on, you, and what you could basically say is all of the interest I'm getting from my lend borrow programmatically goes back to pay back the $5 of coffee. If it takes a little bit longer, I'll pay back more over time. If, it's, if it takes, if I deposit more, it won't be as long and I will end up paying less, right? So this is an example of a new financial primitive that you can really only do in blockchain. A second example is creator monetization. So if you are a creator, and let's say you've got a million views on YouTube, the value of those million views is somewhere around $10,000. Obviously a big range, but let's say it's $10,000. As a creator, sole proprietor, what if they could get a $9,000 advance and stream the $10,000 back to, let's call it the credit pool, or whoever the creditor is, over time? That's incredibly valuable for the, for the creator because that $9,000 could, uh, could fund the next video and help that individual build their business even faster, right? And this is the type of thing where there's already a market for this. It's just in the wrapping of a traditional fund that raised $600 million, and you've got to be a really significant creator in order to be able to access a credit line for your creative, uh, for your creative product, right? Uh, and so in my mind, with a number of these financial markets, what crypto is doing is it's taking the barriers to entry down significantly so you can, tra you can transact at a much smaller size. You transact at a, much smaller, at a much smaller transaction size, and, and you can potentially do things like even an individual video in, in the future. Uh, that's also relevant to a third example here, the corporate context, accounts receivable. Clearly, this is a huge market around the world. Right, AR financing, typically it's net 30 payment days. If I owe someone $100,000, they may sell that 100,000 receivable to get $95,000 today, and whoever's providing that credit may uh, agree to that in order to get my $100,000 paid back in 30 days time, right? And take on the risk of being repaid or not. So this is, some, this, is an ex uh, this is a market that already exists in the billions around the world in so many different corporate contexts, so many, so many different commercial con uh, contexts. So what's unique about something like this? Well, you could potentially do this for a single invoice, or you could do this if you're a much smaller, uh, if you're a much smaller merchant or supplier, and you don't have, for example, a three-year relationship with audited financial statements with East West Bank, right? Uh, so again, you know, in a number of these situations, the demand is there. 
the real world usage, if we want to call it that, we like that term these days, I suppose, uh, is, uh, is absolutely there. And the value that crypto brings is the ability to uh, reveal, monetize, and organize the long tail market around so many of these different economic transactions where fundamentally there's a time value of money trade-off between money today, money tomorrow. So that's the start of what we call this new category, PayFi. And this is something that applies to so many contexts that we already know today, right? Supply chain finance, payday loans, credit cards, corporate credit, interbank repo markets. Um, and uh, so this is just one example of something that we believe is really the original vision of blockchain, right? Uh, to take assets, put them on chain, introduce new ways that people can directly interact with one another. And uh, this is something I believe is only possible on Solana today, not just because of the network, but because of capital liquidity and also talent liquidity. That's it. Thanks, guys. Plus, do you want to take some questions, Lily? Oh, we sure. have some time, so if anybody has a question, feel free Certainly. to ask away. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, and you could uh, zoom into the past to the future. What would you tell your former self 15 years ago, and what would you do now in hindsight? And then the second part of the question is, what next next? Um, I think uh, that's a very broad question. Broad question. Uh, I would have started working on Solana earlier. Uh, <laughs> And it did take me a few years to uh, get, get into the Solana community, but honestly, I think that's something I would have liked to do earlier. I would have never sold Bitcoin. No, I'm joking, but that's probably, that probably describes many of us in this room. <laughs> and um, uh, what, would I, what would I say? Um, I think that, um, I think that uh, speaking of credit markets, you know, what happened in 2021, 2022, that got framed as, crypto rugging so many people to the billions and billions of dollars. In actuality, that was, those were traditional financial primitives, not just primitives, were traditional financial mechanisms applied to cryptocurrency, right? Uh, so I think as an ecosystem, we should have seen through that, right? I know that the fervor of, uh, of yield returns and all those types of things at the time uh, uh, didn't, um, didn't compel everyone to be as diligent as they should have. But I think that uh, we, if we ourselves are always talking about sort of the transparency of on-chain transactions, right, the value of self-custody around your data, uh, your wallet, those types of things, then I would have wished that we applied that mindset a little bit more, uh, more transparently to the whole, you know, credit wrap-up of 2021-2022. Any other questions? Not yet. Or no? All right. Okay. Well, Lily, I'm going to give you your tobler on now, but you're going to get double today <laughs> <laughs> because you're also part of our next panel discussion. Fred, do you want to come down and then we can uh, mic you up? Okay. Thank, thank you so much. You so